YouTube, what's up, man? I got a new gameplay. This is salary cap on the leaderboards, and this is against my man FMB Monster, also known as Juan, also known as Mr. McChicken, also known as Mr. Glitchy. That's my guy, man. Juan's a cool kid for real, man. I really like him. He's always competitive, always wants to play everybody. And if you've watched him play, I mean, you, he's played a lot of buddy, pretty much everybody for money on the leaderboards and also on the Twitch channels, man. So he's definitely been playing a lot of people. And uh, if you want to watch my games live, this game was live on stream. You can check out my stream, twitch.tv slash dub dot. The link is below in the channel. Any offense, defense, special teams you see here that you want, Matt and Turf, that link is below in the description. So if you play one, man, if you watch them play, what he likes to run is this trio. This is salary cap. It's not Mutt. Now, in Mutt, you guys run into running backs like this all the time. But in salary cap, it's rare for someone to have the 99 speed. 40 overall or uh, 120 cap Joe Mixon. That's what he has. Fully powered up. As you see, he goes fourth and four. He goes with a run play. Uh, and that's something that he caught me a lot a little bit. I know he wants to run the ball. I have to do my best job to try to stop the run. As you see here, I'm in 3-3-5. I have um, Cam Chancellor, Jamal Adams, linebacker Sean Taylor. My D-line is not that great, but my linebackers are pretty solid. As you see Cam getting off a block there, making a play. This set has a toss, and it has a dive. And you see he goes for a high ball there. Brian Dawkins swats it away. Um, and I'm starting to learn how to shoot the dive, as you see right there. Really blowing up the dive well. Goes to toss right there. We have guys over there, but that Joe Mixon, his spin moves so fast. I have to do a better job uh, making that play right there. Dive, we kind of blow it up pretty well, but that running back fights. Gets eight yards on that. Next play is a toss. I have uh, Marlon Humphrey, I believe, is out there. Stopped it pretty good. As you see, he took the whole first quarter running the ball. This was the play of the first drive. Jamal Adams killing Alshon Jeffrey on a third and four. I mean, more often than not, we see that pass completed, but Jamal Adams really took his head off right there. Held him to three. That's huge, especially when playing a runner. So now I know, man, if I can go get seven, it's going to change the way this game starts. And uh, one thing about Juan, man, he's really a good defensive player this year. He just runs the ball, play really good defense. He loves these man corners. Like he has, um, of course, the highest Dion, and he has Xavier and Howard right now, the MVP. Both of them with 99 speed. And one thing I want to try to do is really try to burn it over the top somehow. As we see this PA wide receiver in getting separation a little bit right there. But I know he's pretty much mans up my two wide receivers on the trip side and leaves this solo guy kind of for him to guard or his own to guard. He's been putting him in a deep quarter. So the solo guy on my offense as I try to go high ball right here to Vernon on that one-on-one. -on -one, the solo guy I have is pretty much on just one-on-one -on, -one on his own the whole time as I almost throw a pick right there. When someone mans up everybody... And don't really switch it up. I thought Moss would keep running on this one. Almost got away with a catch right there. Almost should have been a pick, really. So, uh, But when someone mans up people all the time and then they sneak in zone every once in a while, it can really throw you off full zone instead of manning everybody up. First play, he goes up to Julio. And we see, again, Jamal Adams. That's the 67 cap Jamal Adams. Not the full Jamal Adams. He's definitely getting the job done as we see that high cap running back breaking a little bit more tackles. I have to stop the run. He goes for a... Uh, whew, Bubble screen and Cam Chancellor. That's full Cam Chancellor. Kills him. Gets him to short yardage, man. And right now, I think he got me with a run for a couple of big plays. A fourth and four he ran and a third and 12 he ran. So I'm playing the run pretty strong right here. I man up everybody. And he goes he goes to roll out. Pretty much everything covered. And I'm trying to not give up the big play. Right here, he playmakers back to the middle. I got to guard the middle. He throws it, and I don't go get the ball. And what that tells me right there, when an easy pick is that ball hawk is off. If you guys have noticed on Xbox, man, sometimes your settings just automatically reset every once in a while. Always check your settings, especially when you're going to play a big game, because they will reset on you. Tries to bomb Jalen Ramsey up the top. That's full Jalen Ramsey. Got him manned up on Kittle pretty much the whole game. Just got to make some tackles here. Third and 12 again. He gets me with another. He ran on fourth and four, a third and 10, and then a third and 12 and came up with it. That's been his most successful running downs. When it's an obvious run situation, I'm doing pretty good, but he's popping quick snaps, and he throws this ball over the top here. Get inside the inside the 30-yard line, inside the 20. He has no timeouts. And one thing, man, a lot of people do as he throws a high ball here, is call timeout to try to get the ball back before half. Me knowing Juan's a runner, I don't want him to run the ball. I don't want him to get a touchdown here, so I'm not going to call timeouts. I'm going to make him rush against the clock as he gets to a third and nine here, and he forces something right there, high ball. Everybody swats it, and finally power up Brian Dawkins. He's 36 cap, 
comes up with a pick, and I just run quarterback sneak to get out of half. So many times I see people calling timeouts to try to get the ball back. One that relaxes the offensive player, and it also, man, allows him to run the ball, man. And by not calling timeout, when he ran the ball, kept the clock running, forces him to rush and forces him to, you know, not think as smartly and fire one in the end zone. Give me a pick. So instead of getting away with points there, I get away with giving up nothing. That's huge to start the second half. It's 3-3. Three to three. Terrible pass by him. Start the first half. Try to dump it over the mixing. He's paying a lot of attention to my wide receivers. Try to, you know, mix in a little running back pass here and there. But my running back is not good. Here we go. I try to burn him. That's what I've been trying to do all day. He's got his... Uh, what's him called? His free safety Dion manned up in my slot receiver. Try to go with a fade, just try to bomb him right there. But Dion was fast enough to be cross man to still keep up with that. I had to see that. Sometimes throughout the games, man, you had to see if you can try to get over the top. And I, I obviously can't right now. And I know that's not an option for me. And it's not an option for him to leave Miles Garrett one on one. Gets to a fourth down, man. And we've both been playing good defense. And for him to go right here, I mean, it's, it's pretty wild. I don't have a problem with it. I mean, you could punt right here, but he decides to go for it. His biggest mistake was going to this set because when you're in compression, man, I talked about this in other videos, man, I'm going to blitz every single person at you, especially 4th and 17 because I don't base a line, so all my corners are right there. So you see both of my corners on the left, my linebacker on the left, and my corner on the right, they're all coming to the party. And when they're all coming to the party, somebody gets home, hits, Bang, turnover on downs. And because I'm turnover on downs, I'm already in field goal range to take the lead. But I'm going to go up top right here to Randy Dandy Moss. Get me at the one-yard line. Quarterback sneak into the end zone. The fall forward animation on the quarterback sneak is bad right now. So if you get inside the two-man run quarterback sneak, even if you get blown up sometime, they'll carry him into the end zone. Here we see again another toss. Just try to make sure he doesn't spin back to the middle and get break a big play. That's one thing. I mean, as much as he's ran pretty successfully, I haven't given up a big play. And that's pretty much when you're defending a run on Madden, man. As long as you don't give up a big play early in the game, you'll be all right, man. There's certain times where you really want to stop it. As you see, I went to tackle really cautiously right there. And he's calling his timeouts, something that really comes back into play late in the game. Uh, most of the time he's calling his timeouts. One, to extend the game. He's losing. He's a runner. He wants the game to last a long time. Uh, especially if he's losing. He needs time, and he needs his running back healthy, especially if he's going to keep pounding the ball like this, as we see my Khalil Mack fighting right there. So now he has no timeouts. Big tackle right there by Marlon Humphrey. Just want to keep him keep him up, keep him in bounds. That's pretty much all I want to do. Incomplete right there, and we're going to go to the fourth quarter. So now with him with no timeouts, every run as we get to a fourth down, he goes for a high ball. I just stay on it. Don't click on the other guy. Jalen Ramsey breaks it up. Turnover on downs. Now this is a big possession for me. Because he has no timeouts. I can run this whole clock out, especially I get down before getting a first down, second down. So now I'm thinking, man, I'm just going to pop a run right here. And this is where I get stuck, and a lot of man players get stuck thinking we have to run the same formation all the time. If I'm going to pop a run here, draw is not ideal. I should really just go into some type of power O or some type of even halfback dive or even quarterback sneak in this situation. I just talked about how effective it is when running when uh, with the fall forward animations. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to milk the clock. He has no timeouts. So one or two first downs. I'm up seven points. I just want to run some of this clock off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to milk it all the way down. I'm going to run draw. Personally, all I'm hoping for is a first down. I'm really just trying to keep the clock running. It's really not a big deal to even get this first down or second down. I just want to run another 30 seconds off the clock. So I run the ball, and my tackle gets blurred. And somehow, of course, w, I lose four yards. That's the problem with draw, man. Draw is nice sometimes, but when this situation is not the best run to run out the clock. So that was a terrible play call by me. So now I'm forced to go ahead and try to get this first down pass in the ball. I'm still going to try to milk some time off the clock uh, as I don't for some reason. That was a terrible by me. I get screamed at, throw an incomplete pass. So that draw really got me flustered right there, and I make a lot of mistakes when you get flustered. When you get aggravated, you get flustered. I snap the ball with 20 seconds still on the play clock. Now I have to cook up a dot. He just blitzed at me, the whole team. So I'm thinking there's no way he does that twice. He's going to show the same look, but he's going to drop off. That's what I'm assuming. I send out everybody he drops off, but I throw this zig route way too early. Terrible pass. Just a bad three-play sequence. Just did not execute the way I needed to with him having no timeouts. And honestly, him having no timeouts maybe made me play a little bit cautious, a little bit more to you know run out the clock rather than go get a first down. And here we go with him popping a run, finally get to the two-yard line, goes for a high ball over here. Next play, he just goes to what works down here. Quarterback sneak and my D-tackle carries him five yards into the end zone. So I go from being able to run out the clock to now I'm in a tie game. 
the first play right here, I'm going to go ahead and throw this in route here to, to uh, Calvin Johnson. I want to show you guys this again because previous play is a big deal. Now, previous play is not on in salary cap, but I use the field. Like, I'm looking right now, like, bang, okay, I caught that pass, but I see Julio Jones is wide open on, on a post route. Like, he did not cover Julio's own. So, so the first thing I'm going to do right now is go back to that same play, and look what happens. He runs a similar defense. Julio Jones wide open, catching for the touchdown, but no, he has no timeouts left. We're just going to run around and take the time off the clock and the game with a field goal. And I want to show you guys this play again. Watch my running back taking out two. That's crazy. Vic with the speed to elude anybody. No other quarterback is making that throw because just that if you have 96 speed or whatever it may be, just get you away from the deep, from the uh, rusher that much faster. And obviously you never want to score there because scoring there is the only way he can get back in the game, only way he can get the ball back. So him using his timeouts in the third quarter to try to keep his running back fresh and have the run still an option really came back to bite him in the ass, man. I tell you guys all the time, I really hate using my timeouts especially early in the game, never in the third quarter. I don't even like using my timeouts in, in the first half before the, before the two-minute warning. So that's definitely a, a something that was a big error by him. But why, man, if you see him on the leaderboards, if you're playing in last chance qualifier, man, definitely he's going to run the ball, man. you got to be able to stop him, run, uh, him running the ball. Probably one of the few people that actually run the ball effectively this year, and he uses that, that super-powered-up Joe Mixon. It was definitely a handful. Definitely a good defensive player, so I fully expect him to qualify for the last chance tournament and fully expect him to make a run. I appreciate you guys watching, man. Please hit the like button and comment on what running back you like to use the most.